I grew up in an immigrant Chinese household clung together with expectations. The fear of not meeting them constantly tugged at those thin strands. We crammed eight people in for, from three generations into a bedroom, into a four bedroom house. My dad made the money, my mom took care of us. It was very utilitarian. They never showed us the Western concept of love that you see in the movies. <laughs> love was excessive doting and scrutiny. Kids were expected to be quiet. This was a word that not only meant obedient, but submissive and well-behaved. I not only did what I was told to do, I did what was expected of me. Of course, the Confucian Society would have a word for that. <laughs> it was a compliment. Parents traded with each other and then played against their old children like Pokemon cards. <laughs> Mrs. Pang's draconic Charizard of a son incinerates <laughs> your weak Woba Fett manners. <laughs> Part of being quiet was to stand there and take that criticism. My parents were so happy that was my default reaction. My fight or flight response was freezing. The most useless one, and it popped up throughout my life at the most un uh, unfortunate times. Being the eldest son, my parents expected me to start the cycle all over again. Excel in school, get a great job, father obedient kids, ugh. head the whole household, and then be my parents' elder care, just like my father before me. My older sister would be married into someone else's family, so she didn't count. The plan and the pressure to follow it made the perfect conditions to grow little gems of anxiety. <laughs> I was a geeky kid. I was smart and indeed quiet. My life revolved around school and I was good at it. And then the third grade hit. And my stress ramped right up in the fourth grade because in the fourth grade, a whole other year later, I had to write my first long report, the one about California missions. <laughs> I never stopped worrying about it for nearly two years. I lost sleep, I got sick. This was gonna be bad. <laughs> if I didn't nail this one for my ancestors, I would be the most obedient, disobedient child in the history of my entire family line. But they would say it like, Nehai Ne Chun Ga Go Zai M Kwai Go Zai. Yikes. <laughs> my, grade, my fourth grade finally started, and I felt worse. My sister had a great report. She got to pick a nice big one with tons of exciting history San Francisco de Assis. I could do that. I'm scrappy. I could trip a few kids down to pick the good one. <laughs> My future was at stake. Then the prophecy fulfilled itself, the first of many. I got sick the day we picked our missions. No doubt stress kick, kicked it over the edge. When I went back, it was too late. Two pitiful sights remained. I picked Mission San Rafael Archangel because my friend was Rafael. And that's it. That was the extent of my strategy. <laughs> my classmates picked the library clean. One book was left, a gray postcard-sized book about 50 pages long. It had a total of three pages of, for San Rafael. There was no way I could turn that tiny bit of information to a full report in my own words. All the sentences already sounded great as is. <laughs> what could I, a mere 10 year old, add to the pre existing literature? I couldn't even drive there. I was fucked. <laughs> my stress response kicked in freeze. My instinct had a great idea just ignore the assignment. I had no clue that the time-honored solution to this problem was just to ask your parents to do it for you. 
but English was a far second language for my parents, so it wouldn't have worked anyway. All they did was wring their hands or yell, depending on who was checking in, and ask if I was done. My, so my sister also didn't know what to do. The deadline hit, and all I could do the late night before was copy everything from the book, even the artwork. <laughs> Mrs. Lintz entrapped me for plagiarism. <laughs> she challenged me on a word she was sure I didn't know, flanked, as in two stone columns flanked the wooden door. I knew what the word meant, but in my heart, I knew I was guilty. <laughs> and I didn't defend myself. She gave me a C, and I remembered the word forever. <laughs> <laughs> what she didn't know was that she also sentenced me to endless berating from my strict Asian parents. They diagnosed me with laziness and treated it with yelling. <laughs> A lot of yelling. You know what I'm talking about. It turns out San Rafael was the shittiest one I could have chosen. It was a submission. I didn't even know that was a, even a thing since the assignments implied that there would be actual whole missions. It served a very boring life, being the hospital of the more glorious San Francisco de Assis. By 1870, San Rafael deteriorated down to nothing. It earned the honor of being the most obliterated mission. This meant that karma did exist, and the mission got what it deserved. <laughs> then the Hearst Foundation, flaunting its money and pride, went against a right and just fate and rebuilt the thing in 1949. I wasn't better for having done that colonialism glorifying assignment. All I got was sick and in trouble. In no way could that last paragraph make up two pages, by the way, and certainly with, not with that sass. <laughs> I should have opened up the report with, San Rafael was the shittiest mission. <laughs> Mrs. Lintz would definitely know I didn't copy that from her. <laughs> My freeze response surfaced during other big firsts at school. My fear of fucking up caused me, caused me to freeze on assignments, placement tests, and classes. All the prophecies came true. During the SAT season, I tanked my first attempt hard. I, I then came back through sheer willpower after six straight months of retaking practice tests every day. I got a perfect math score and a much improved verbal. I was just afraid of taking the test itself. Being able to bounce back from these setbacks time and again left me undiagnosed and untreated. There was, that's the treachery of being high functioning with an invisible disease. When I recovered and turned out fine, I gaslit myself into thinking I didn't have a problem in the first place. As always, my parents' expert opinion concluded I was infected with a bout of laziness. The characteristic, the characteristic Western lack of discipline had warmed its way in, they concluded. To fix that, they demanded more and more excellence without any an accompanying encouragement. My dad famously said, if you're doing well, why do I have to say anything? <laughs> I graduated, left home, and got married. I finally didn't have the daily barrage of criticism. So instead, they saved it and dumped it, dumped a few weeks worth at a time. I couldn't take any more and drifted away from them. Monthly nagging became every few months. Then they were doing little more than wellness checks between gatherings. But they still found a way to get the final word in. Even though we weren't speaking, I heard echoes of them. In my late 20s, when I got too exhausted to keep my mind focused, my parents' critical voices started looping in my mind. The voices accused me of not being quiet, just like that sentence I uttered earlier. <laughs> yes, the most disobedient of the entire fucking family. <laughs> they told me I shouldn't have done that. Nothing specific, just that. <laughs> Gloop ended with, you should have done that better. Also not specific, by the way. <laughs> that wasn't enough. Do better. 
everyone had to deal with my radioactive neuroticism. On the upside, I was now an engineer, which is kind of like a professional warrior. <laughs> Will it work? Can we build it? Are we all using inches or millimeters? Did we account for vibration? Will it survive? And most importantly, did we put the bolts back before moving the weather satellite? <laughs> I was that guy who brought everything, who brought up everything that could go wrong. Even my colleagues thought I was a little extra. And these were other professional warriors. <laughs> On the downside, my wife had to deal with my constant indecision, and the emotional labor of making choices fell on her. The marriage deteriorated, and after my divorce, I was finally diagnosed. I had both generalized anxiety disorder and major depressive disorder. Worrying about perfection and failing to achieve it puts you in that cycle. You get the second disorder for free. <laughs> Traumatizing people up here. I went through a lot of counseling and supervised drug experimentation. When a form asked me when it started, it finally clicked that it was the third grade when I, with that damn mission project. <laughs> After this re revelation, I realized I had to let go of all of my parents' expectations. I systematically dismantled the plan. I swore off kids, because fuck them. <laughs> I limited my contacts with my parents. I limited my contact with my parents. I ended, up I, I ended any hope of living under the same roof and taking care of them in their old age. Improv theater turn, uh, was a turning point. The whole idea of that is to not plan your decision. I start volunteering for things I had no idea how to do. You know, like talking about my mental illness in front of strangers. <laughs> Just a few years ago, my parents' voices stopped showing up. I still am not all the way fixed. I honestly don't know how other people live their lives without this constant buzz going on in here. I still try to optimize everything to some undefined level of protect perfection. If I let myself, I could think of how everything could go wrong, right down to the second I freeze and get hit by a train. <laughs> For those here with anxiety, you know what you sound like. Remember that comes from an ancient place that no longer keeps you alive, but keeps you from living your life. Yeah. And you know, if it sounds like my disapproving Cantonese speaking parents, well, it might be something more serious than anxiety. <laughs> In my last session with my psychiatrist, his prognosis was, You've reached a point where you're functioning, so we'll stop messing with your medication. <laughs> <sighs> That's a victory and I'll take it, but seriously, fuck San Rafael. Oh my goodness, that was Vamp first timer, Hoenn Mack!